this is the best beet germination I've ever seen. That's pretty good. Hopefully this will be a good grow. Let's take a look at the beet. Whoa! That is a lot of germination. It's crazy. I never expected that kind of germination. Let's take a look at the beet. Wow. That is really good germination for beet. That's very promising. I'm going to take the cover off and leave the blackout dome on for a day or two. I took the dome off today. This is the best beet grow I've ever had. And I think if this ends up doing well like I think it will, I think I've finally mastered the beet. Good, fantastic amount of uh, germination, heavy duty, amount of growth, perfect. The beet is looking phenomenal. Really, really good. It's a very rewarding grow, this one. The beet is looking phenomenal. Definitely the best one I've ever grown. Super, super dense. Beautiful, beautiful grow. Laid on the beet today. I was going to harvest them. Uh, but someone in the group mentioned that chefs like them with the true leaf on them. So I'm going to uh, wait a little longer, which goes against my <laughs> better instincts that um, the longer you grow something, the more opportunity for problems. And um, still we're in trials with the beet, so I guess we could test the limit a little bit by trying to get a true leaf on there, a little bit of a true leaf on there. Let's see what we got looking down in there. It's got nice bright red coloration on the, on the stems, which is something that's definitely desirable, the color of the stem. Gorgeous. Anyway, take it out. I took it out today and I rinsed it. And as I was rinsing, I was rubbing my hands across just to make sure we get any holes that may be on there off. I don't see many holes. Well, here's one right here on the end. And when you have one, all you got to do is they're, they almost come off real easy. So if they don't come off by rubbing, you can just take and ever so slightly twist it like that. And it'll come right off. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Had I harvested, this is what we would have gotten today. This is one of the thickest grows of any microgreen I've ever grown. And it's beet. I would have never, ever ever guessed the beet could get this thick you know because there, I've tried I've been trialing the beet to, to see if I could get a decent harvest you know somewhere close to maybe half of this even but it just seems like not only are they grow and it just seems like even some more of the little ones it's like the seed that you know some that normally wouldn't pop up even they're popping up so because each of the beet seed has several little plants inside of it or the husk has several little seeds in it however you want to look at it but I'm, I'm getting nervous now about harvesting this because um, the longer you grow something the more chances there are of something going wrong and I want to you know the first time this I get this good a growth I want to carry it to the first true leaf um, as was recommended to me 
but it is the first grow. So these are the thoughts that are going in my mind. And right now, everything is pristine. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it's the, you know, the cotyledons, nice and healthy and thick. Let me see if I can get you some color. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess I'll let it go another day and we'll see what I think about it tomorrow. All right, it's harvest day and I can't stand it anymore. It's, I want to get this thing harvested. This is by far my most rewarding grow uh, by leaps and bounds. And that's because I've got, I don't know, a year and a half. Not a year and a half. I got, a, a, well, yeah. I got about a year and a half's worth of uh, work involved trying to get it to get anything close, let alone as great as I finally got it. So we're going to harvest this, and um, I wanted to say that I did have some discoveries getting to this point with beet. I think that will help with other microgreen grows as well. And I plan to share that information in the future. But anyway, let's take a close, close look and see what it looks like. See the dark red color. Now this is early wonder tall top, so you don't have the bull's blood, which is a lot more expensive. You don't have that red leaf. But they should behave the same, whether it's early wonder tall top or bull's blood or any other beet. In fact, I think Shard will too. Um, one of the things I'm doing right now is I've got Shard and a beet grow growing to validate this grow that I do in fact have it down pat and uh, get this kind of density, this kind of growth. So anyway, let me put this on the tripod and we'll get to harvesting. All right, everybody. We'll go through the typical harvest I do outside out here on the deck. And I'm going to use a side hang harvest this time where I hang it over the rack and harvest so that it falls down in the tote here. And that should be interesting. Um, this is a great grow. It's, uh, I think I said this, it's my most rewarding grow by far. And that's because it, it was extremely hard earned. It took me a lot, a lot to get to this point. And once I validate it, um, by growing another couple grows and chard as well, which is in the same family. Um, then if I get the same results, then I know I've got it down pat and I know what to do. So that's why this is so rewarding. It's because beet is a premium crop. It's very hard to grow, whether you grow it in soil or hydroponically. And uh, as most will tell you, it's impossible to grow hydroponically until now. So, I'll show you what it looks like. These are the roots and the first thing we're going to do is pull the screen out and I will hang the screen on the tray here. So, let me get this. It's behaving like all the other micros behave. It's just got this nice beautiful carpet. I love to see it happening with beet. I can already feel that some of the seeds with beet, it's, they're a little heavier the seeds are. So I need to be careful when I move this so as not to get too many seeds. <laughs> Talking to you, my head's probably above the camera. And not to get too many seeds in the harvest area here. But if I do, that's okay too. We'll just uh, get those out later. Alright, so the way I typically do this type of harvest is I start at the top and you might not be able to see my head but that's okay. And I go along the ridge line here It's real easy because the way they're spread, it makes them poke out and separate. All 
All right, everybody, that's it, and that completes the harvest. Got some danglers here. Beat is precious, so I'm gonna take a little time with you while you're watching and get that. So, um, yeah, what I'm going to do here is um, I'm gonna shake these a little bit like this and put them in the tray. And then we'll get a weight on them. And I'm shaking them like this just to make sure that there's no holes. The holes are really hard. And we don't want those in the mix. So when I get done with this, I'll finish this up. I'll bring you in and I'll let you look at the mat here really closely because as usual fungus and disease are always a question but I can always tell you that if there's a problem the microgreens themselves are going to display it so I would have known by now if there was going to be a problem but I'll bring you in and show you anyway and then we'll get all these microgreens put in this tray and we'll do the way in. All right we'll do the way in first and then I'll show you the mat uh, along with some closing music lovely music <laughs> that I use on my videos. But first, before we do the weight, I want you to get a look at a couple things. First is what the microgreen looks like itself. Whoa, let me pick it back up. Round to the first couple of true leaves here. viewer up so I can see what you're seeing better. There we go. Notice one other thing. Look at my fingers. They're stained. When I was cutting a beet, evidently they're they're bleeding like bleat like beets do. Let me show you another one. I'll get an off camera taste test on these two. Well, I've heard people say they taste earthy, and they do. <laughs> earthy and like a very clean and crisp texture. It's very, very tasty. I can see why they're popular. And they have a real neat look to them, too. Along with how beautiful they are. Okay. Let's get a weight in. We'll do it like I normally do. Turn on the unit. You know, a flat surface there. All right, I'm going to put a cup to raise to elevate the empty tray. And this empty tray is just like the one the microgreens are on over here, except. No microgreens, and the reason why we have we do that is so that we can zero it out. That way, when we put the other tray on, nothing but microgreen weight. Those are gorgeous microgreens. <laughs> Those are so gorgeous. Okay, that's what the take is. Nineteen point. Make up your mind. 19.65, 19.7 pound, uh, ounces, pounds. That is substantial. That's more than a pound. It is 1.228 or 1.23 pounds. Over a pound a beat. I am very, very pleased. This is Brent, you guys. We'll see you later.